America is in love with cars, but this relationship comes at a price. Pollution, global warming, high fuel costs, and a country that is addicted to foreign oil. A problem that has become increasingly troubling in recent years. The whole world in trying to gain access to oil and natural gas, and especially oil, uh, puts one on a headlong course, a collision course among many countries uh, of who will get this oil in the future. It's almost uh, unbelievable that a country of the, of the superpower, the United States, would find themselves in a spot where they were dependent on oil from countries that were not friendly to us. We have to stop using so much oil, and that means we must find alternative fuels. Why is it important that we need to continue to make this transition away from petroleum towards biofuels and electrons? In a nutshell, oil is costing us dearly and hurting our economy, our environment, and our national security. Today, there are millions of vehicles on the road that already use less gasoline, hybrid cars. But many feel these are not good enough to make the dramatic change we need. Today's hybrid cars, like the Prius, use a combination of electricity and gas. They get good mileage, but still rely on gas to power the engine and to charge the battery. The next step is the plug-in hybrid. With plug-in hybrids, we're going to take the technology one step further than regular hybrids by combining the booming popularity of hybrid vehicles with the added energy efficiency and cost effectiveness of our nation's electricity grid. It's a really exciting time in American history because we're standing on the cusp of a new generation of vehicles that can truly revolutionize our national energy paradigm. Although the change to our climate will take years, the changes in fuel economy and cost are immediate. I get really good gas mileage. 100 miles per gallon is, it isn't a, a myth, you know, that's a reality in a car like this. In the city from 150 to 225 miles per gallon, and on the highway anywhere from 85 to 110 miles per gallon, every single car that has this battery added to it uh, will save 80% gasoline, that's oil imports, and 60% emissions. And there isn't anything else that the Congress or any of the states are looking at right now that can give you that kind of short-term response. Today, most plug-in hybrids are conversions of existing hybrids, mainly the Prius. The fact that you can't buy plug-ins right now is a problem because we believe that plug-in hybrids should be commercially available. So in order to do that, we actually converted some Priuses into plug-in hybrids so that we didn't have to wait for the automakers to make them. We didn't make any modifications to the drivetrain of the car. That's pretty much stock. The main changes are in the back of the car. We added a larger battery pack. So if so many people believe the plug-in hybrid is such a great idea, why don't we have them already? Many of the reasons relate to one item. So you can say the big problem is batteries, 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 and the big problem with the batteries is cost, cost, cost. Um, so that's the major hurdle that has to be overcome. Right now, the, the batteries in this car cost more than the car itself. It's believed costs will come down with mass production, but there are other issues. To appeal to consumers, the battery needs to be powerful and have a long lifespan. Conventional lithium ion has very high energy, but it doesn't have power and it doesn't have uh, good safety and the life is very short. If you think about a cell phone, the battery only lasts a couple of years, two or three years. In a vehicle, it needs to last 10 years and you need very high power. So it needs to deliver a burst of, of, of energy really quickly to drive the acceleration. Other issues being tackled by engineers concern safety and disposal. Even if these challenges are met, this still won't be a car for long distances. But many people feel that this won't be an issue for most consumers. 70% of all Americans drive under 40 miles per day on their annual commute. So the kind of coverage that you could get being able to plug it into your garage every night, 60 cents will take you about 40 miles compared to what gasoline costs. The race is on to produce a battery that will satisfy all these requirements. New batteries have been developed and battery technology is improving uh, as we speak. Almost every year better batteries are coming out. 
Even if batteries do improve, there is still one major roadblock. We know the technology of electric cars works. We know that advanced batteries work. But trying to put it all together and to convince those executives in Detroit that there is a viable business case to be made for electric and hybrid vehicles is still a very, very difficult thing to do. Ultimately, our goal at Google.org is to convince the automakers that plug-in hybrids are the way of the future and that there are so many benefits and there's so much demand for these cars that they should be making them themselves and that conversions wouldn't be necessary. You know, we had an electric and hybrid vehicle program in this country in 1976. 1976, okay, 31 years ago. So you would have thought, and by now we would have had millions of these electric and hybrid vehicles running around in the U.S., and of course, it hasn't happened. Well, we don't have millions, but the auto industry is beginning to see that these cars are in demand, and at least a few companies are promising production of plug-in hybrids in a few years. So what we are doing to try to help that market is to put some incentives on the table for individual consumers that will buy a plug-in car, for utilities that will help build out this smart electricity grid, and for the auto manufacturers who will actually make these initial cars. Unlike other alternative fuels, plug-in hybrids require little change to the nation's infrastructure, since electricity is all around and being produced all the time. This is the greatest oil and emission savings for the least amount of infrastructure change based on a technology that has just about arrived. That's very, very exciting. Although plug-in hybrids could be used by millions of Americans, they are not for every household. Plug-in isn't the solution to everything. Plugins really aren't something that can be used by everybody. They're essentially a tool that can be used by people who live in the suburbs, like people who have a garage or a carport or have access to charging. So it's part of a range of different solutions, but it's not the solution. Even with their limitations, many people believe plug-in hybrids will provide enormous benefits for our society and that they are even essential for our future. Very seldom do new technologies emerge that can literally change the world. And I truly believe that plug-in hybrids are one of these technologies. I believe that this plug-in hybrid area may be critical to the survival of humanity. It is clear that all roads lead to alternative fuel for our cars. Many scientists believe that if we don't change our energy habits soon, there will be serious consequences. This really is trying to save the world as we know it. The real question is, can we do it fast enough before, before a major cataclysm occurs in terms of the oil supply on this planet. Because certainly the United States, which consumes about a quarter of the world's supply, is going to be especially vulnerable. It's going to hit our economy and our way of life very, very hard if we can't get a grip on this very quickly. Maybe it's just people haven't realized inside themselves just how difficult and personal the challenges are that we are all facing as a species. And maybe in 40 years we'll take them more seriously, but unfortunately that may be too late if we don't do something in the meantime.